What's up Safe Moon Army? It's Safe Moon Mark and I'm here to explain a consistent inconsistency seen when looking at Safe Moon across various platforms. Why is the price always different depending on the exchange? To any experienced traders who have a solid understanding of arbitrage and how it pertains to Safe Moon, just skip to the end of the video where I introduce my Safe Moon use case that has been in development for over 2 months now and information regarding my first of many Safe Moon giveaways. Okay, back on topic. The major reason behind this difference in price is arbitrage, well, the lack thereof. Arbitrage is a way of making low risk profits in any market due to the differences in price of an asset within different ecosystems. I assume everyone here knows how supply and demand influences the price of an asset, so I will skip that part and just start with an example. There is a potato distribution business in Idaho. Idaho has ideal potato growing conditions, and the number of people per capita is relatively small, allowing for cheaper land, so this potato distributor is able to produce potatoes at a vastly lower cost than people trying to produce the same potatoes in New York, for instance, where the supply is lower and the demand is also higher because there are a lot more mouths to feed. Arbitrage actor Alice sees this as an opportunity to make easy, low-risk profit. In the Idaho potato market, a bag of potatoes can sell for as low as $3, whereas back in New York, Alice's hometown, the same bag would fetch any knowledgeable potato salesman $5 minimum. Alice packs her suitcase and gets on the next flight to Idaho. She will buy as many potatoes as she can to maximize her profits and cover her traveling expenses. Alice returns back to New York to sell her Idaho potatoes at the New York market value of $5. If Alice makes enough trips and buys enough bags of potatoes, she will reduce the supply of potatoes in Idaho, increasing their demand and thus increasing their price. Likewise, she will flood the New York market with potatoes, increasing their supply and thus lowering their price until there is equilibrium, and potatoes are worth the same across all markets, the New York market and the Idaho market. This is arbitrage. It is making a profit off of the differences in price of the same asset in different markets, such as the $2 discrepancy between potatoes in New York and the same potatoes in Idaho. Arbitrage can and does exist in every marketplace that is not monopolized. And even though arbitrage only exists because of the differences in price, it actually stabilizes the price when users act on it. Let's use cryptocurrency as an example. Different cryptocurrency markets have their own supply and demand for any particular asset. Let's use Bitcoin. Market maker Bob has just listed Bitcoin on his exchange, and as a result, Bob's market has seen a massive amount of buy orders compared to sell orders, causing the value of Bitcoin to rise in that isolated market. And at this moment, Bob's Bitcoin is worth more than any other Bitcoin on other markets. But wait, if this is true, why does the price of Bitcoin stay around the same no matter which exchange you look at? because of arbitrage. Now let's say Bob's value of Bitcoin is $40,500. Market maker Charlie has had Bitcoin listed for several years. Its supply and demand fluctuates steadily with the market and the price of Bitcoin is stable here around $40,000 even. Arbitrage actor Alice buys as much Bitcoin as she can from market maker Charlie because it is at a much lower price than what market maker Bob is offering. She then sends her Bitcoin over to Bob and sells it in Bob's market for a higher price, and repeats this cycle until the price evens out. Why does the price even out? Because as Bob's Bitcoin rises in value, arbitrage actors begin flooding other markets with buy orders, and likewise flooding Bob's market with sell orders of the Bitcoin they had just purchased and transferred over from a different market. If the price does not correct itself, arbitrage actors will simply continue this process forever, basically printing money until the supply and demand across the two exchanges are equal. Okay Mark, this is cool, but what does this mean for SafeMoon? Why can't arbitrage help SafeMoon remain stable on the different markets like Bitcoin and potatoes? The answer has to do with that 10% tax applied to every buy, sell, and transfer of SafeMoon. For arbitrage actors, this is intimidating. In order for an actor to make money, the difference in price between the exchanges needs to be 27.1% higher than the exchange they buy from, and I am discluding network fees as they become obsolete with large transactions. Why 27%? Isn't it 10%? Well, let's see. Let's see if Alice will make money buying SafeMoon on PancakeSwap for 00005 
and selling it on BitMart for 000006. Alice notices the price difference and rushes over to PancakeSwap to load up on SafeMoon. Her initial investment does not matter, so we will call it X. Upon purchase, Alice loses 10% of her tokens, resulting in 0.9x of the tokens she would have started with without a tax. When Alice transfers these to BitMart, she loses another 10%, or is left with 0.81x her initial investment. When she finally sells, she pays one more 10% tax, reducing her investment down to 72.9%. If you follow along with my math, you will notice that Alice will net a loss with these prices, regardless of how much money she puts in. Now let's generalize this for all prices and initial investments to get a nice equality. As explained earlier, if Alice is hoping to profit off arbitrage with SafeMoon, she must expect to sell no greater than 72.9% of her initial investment of tokens. First thing we have to figure out is how many tokens will we be able to sell. We take our initial investment X and divide it by the buy price B. That gives us the amount of tokens we would have if there was no taxes included at all. We then multiply this result by 0.729, as that is the number of tokens that we will be left with after all taxes are included. This answer is the number of tokens we have to sell in SafeMoon. To get this value in USD, we must multiply it by the price of the exchange we are selling on. We will refer to this price as S. Okay, that's the end. What is the answer to this equation? This is the value in US dollars of your investment after all fees are considered. So what does this answer need to be? It needs to be greater than your initial investment or else you're doing all this just to lose money. Okay, we have a fairly ugly equation. Let's rewrite it to make it look more readable. So if we move things around, we can see that 0.729x times the sale price divided by the buy price must be greater than x. This is kind of better, but there is still an x on both sides of the equation and there's no addition or subtraction to worry about, so let's divide both sides of this equation by x. And as a side note, your initial investment cannot be negative, so no, we do not need to flip the equality sign. Much nicer, we now have a wonderful way of evaluating whether or not the price between exchanges will net you profit with SafeMoon. Sale price divided by buy price times 0.729 must be greater than 1. Let's see if Alice in our example from before would make any money. By substituting in the values for sale and buy prices, we see that we get an answer of 0.8748, which means Alice would be left with only 87.5% of her investment if she had gone through with that arbitrage, arbitrage trade. Not good. You can make the equality shorter by moving the 0.729 to the other side, but this is an easy fraction to remember considering it's taking 10% of 1 three times. So I left it that way. Well, what price does BitMart need to be in order for Alice to make money? Let's rewrite our equation. If we multiply both sides of our equality by the buy price, we find that the sale price times 0.729 must be greater than the buy price to see a profit. To see the minimum sale price we need to make money, just divide both sides by 0.729 and we see that sale price must be greater than the buy price divided by 0.729, or we will lose money on our trade. So let's divide the pancake swap price of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.00005 by 0 0.729 and we will get the answer of 0.00006857. If the price is anywhere above this point, we can expect to make a profit. What this means is there are no arbitrage actors equalizing the price of SafeMoon between markets unless one exchange's price is around one third more expensive than another, which has happened before. BitMart has seen some crazy runs which were quickly diffused by arbitrage actors and brought back within this 27.1% range. Without arbitrage actors, there is no force to govern the price of SafeMoon on different markets other than the supply and demand of the markets themselves. But rest assured that the price difference will never stray far from 27.1%, and if it does, you have a serious opportunity to earn free SafeMoon. I encourage experienced traders to look for these swings in price, as they are fairly common. Arbitrage sounds like a nasty word, but it only would help SafeMoon in every way. Not only would exchange prices remain in balance, but the repeated buys, transfers, and sells would mean crazy reflections and crazy burns as well. It's a true win-win-win for the entire community. 
However, this is not financial advice, and arbitrage is risky in this case. I hope this helped clarify a lot of the questions you were having regarding the difference in price between exchanges. I have much more content lined up for you guys over the next couple days. I'm also giving away 25 million SafeMoon if we can get my Twitter up to 1,000 followers. We are starting small, and this will be my first of many SafeMoon giveaways. To enroll in this giveaway, just simply follow my Twitter at MarkyMark underscore 4200. The link will be in the description. Twitter will allow me to communicate with the community directly on where there is confusion and what topics you would like me to cover in the future. I am hoping to grow this beyond a YouTube channel. I have spent the last several months developing a use case for SafeMoon and all of the community's favorite altcoins and meme coins. We are in testing right now, but tonight and over the next two weeks I will be giving updates on our progress on my Twitter account and teasing some features. I have established a legal entity, and we are going to extend the lifetime of everyone's favorite meme coins far beyond our own. Now I'm bullish on meme coins because I feel they are rich in symbolism and history. We might not see it as history yet since we are currently living in this time period, but if a savvy historian is willing to spend $20,000 on an 1800 silver coin from North Carolina with a misprinted letter on it, I believe humanity will be racing to own even a few pieces of the currency that changed currency forever. I need to act fast while meme coins are still hot. If we can get them used daily beyond just investments, we could see meme coins continuing on for generations to come. P.S. If there are any skilled animators or editors watching this, shoot me a private message on Twitter. Well, that about sums it up. Thank you all for tuning in. Leave a like and subscribe if this helped you out at all or if you love meme coins. Stay tuned because I have a lot more content to drop on you guys.